And now for today's Bible question. Today we've been learning about rewards of the faithful. Those who pray with humility and persistence can expect that God will reward their faith. Those who want to belong to God's kingdom must be willing to forsake all their treasures in this world and faithfully follow the Lord. Our limitations make it difficult to understand God's great plan of redemption. But by faith, God can open our eyes to see the truth. Someone might ask the question, How can I know if my faith is enough to inherit eternal life? The ruler who came to Jesus asked him what must he do to inherit eternal life. But after the conversation with Jesus, he went away still rich in possessions, but sad in heart. His desire was good to gain eternal life, but he thought perhaps it was something he could earn by good works or buy with money. He never thought it might cost him everything he owned. The man wanted assurances of one day going to heaven as all people do, but was not prepared to give up his comfort in this world to gain his place in heaven. We need to understand that eternal life is a free gift to those who believe in Jesus. And while it does not cost anything to receive it, it will cost us everything to authenticate it. God desires that our faith not be just superficial, only involving our words. Faith must have an influence on our behavior and decisions. For faith to be real, it must be tested and shown that it means what it says. If I am selling something of value to a prospective buyer, and he says he is keen to buy what I am selling, he might ask me to hold on to the item until he can come with the full payment. To test his sincerity, I might ask him to provide me with a deposit to assure me of his intentions to buy. Many people say they want to have eternal life, but when that life costs them something, like their reputation or their family or their job, their words prove to have little worth. Can you demonstrate the reality of your faith by the manner in which you live? It is not so much a matter of the quantity of a person's faith that matters, but rather what the object of their faith is. The true Christian directs his faith toward Jesus, but not in himself. So many folks are so close to the kingdom of God because they believe all the facts about Jesus dying on the cross and resurrecting on the third day. They accept that they are sinners and that only Jesus' death on the cross is able to pay the penalty for their sins. Yet they still hold on to the devil's lie that their salvation is somehow dependent upon their own efforts. Be careful that your faith is centered entirely in Jesus and not in yourself. If you believe in Jesus as your Savior, but also depend on your good deeds to earn your way to heaven, then you are not truly saved and will miss out on God's salvation. Many people struggle with an assurance of eternal life. This is because the evidence has not been clearly seen in their life, or they have not taken time to carefully read their Bibles to know from God's Word those things that show true faith. I recall as a young believer wondering about whether I was truly saved and on my way to heaven. But after reading the Bible more carefully, I was given assurances by God that rested on God's Word and not just my feelings. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that if you try really hard to be a good Christian, then God will surely accept you as his child and bring you to heaven. The difference between the religious man and the true Christian is that the religious man is still trying by his own efforts to earn his place in heaven. But the true Christian labors for God not to gain heaven, but out of love for Jesus because he knows that he is saved and assured of heaven. One produces cold religious ritual and the other a life and love that are unmistakably from God. If you do not know that new life that comes from the Holy Spirit, then today is the day you need to turn to the Lord 
and cry out like the tax collector in our lesson today who said, O oh Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Many of you listening to my voice are interested in having eternal life and knowing for sure that you have it. Please make sure that you accept God's free gift of eternal life by placing your faith in Jesus alone. Also make sure that the reality of your faith is seen by the choices you make and the manner in which you live your life. Do not fool yourself into thinking you can have all the riches of this world and still gain heaven. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Luke chapter 18, verse 22.